Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on this W Trails video. Today we're going to be talking about the history of adventure backpacks. So, I want you to strap in. You're going to learn some interesting facts about why and how your pack was developed. Backpacks for use in a wilderness setting have been used for thousands of years. Otzi, the famous mummy of one of our ancestors from the Copper Age, had a backpack made from animal fur and other gear in his possession. 1600 is the recorded time when the double back was invented. It was made from the same material that were used to repair ship's sails, known as duffel bags because the material itself came from Duffel, Belgium. Packs took the form of uh, bindles on sticks or other less useful forms of transportation around uh, 1877 when Henry Miriam developed the knapsack with a sheet metal that helped reduce the fatigue uh, of a soldier who would have to carry around the weight. Backpacks continued to become more modern, especially during World War I, where the packs developed would strap to the upper and lower torso of a soldier in order to better distribute the weight of ammunition, water, clothes, and other supplies needed for extended stays at the front line. The external frame backpack was patented in 1922 by Lloyd F. Nelson. Shortly thereafter, around 1930, Jerry Cunningham, as a former soldier with the famous 10th Mountain Division, would recognize the need for a more sophisticated backpacking equipment for the Army to carry heavy gear and not slide around on their backs in rough terrain. Jerry would go on to create the first zippered pack, and then, not long after, founded a mountaineering equipment after serving in World War II. In the 1940s, children started taking backpacks with them to school. These bags became lightweight, functional, and even fashionable. In the 1950s, Plastisol was used to imprint these backpacks with popular characters from our cartoons. In 1950, Dick and Nina Kelty made backpacks in their California home. Dick, who was an aircraft engineer, would weld the aluminum by hand by bending it over wooden mandrels in his garage, and Nina sewed the pack together in their living room. Dick didn't like putting the ends of his back uh, into his back pockets to stabilize the frame, so he added a plain webbing belt to the frame ends and buckled it across his weight. This was revolutionary, and uh, the stabilizing and transfer of the weight to the hips form a baseline for the modern outdoor pack, even more functional, lightweight, and easier to carry. Vietnam ushered in the Anero when military backpacks necessary for war uh, in thick foliage. These low-profile, streamlined packs with aluminum frames, known as Alice for all-purpose lightweight individual carrying equipment, would help soldiers move through the brush while carrying heavy equipment. In addition to that, they were moisture-resistant, and there weren't any zippers to break since the pockets were all operated by straps with metal buckles, which allowed for a lot of gear to be stuffed in. These packs were and still are favorite pieces of kit. Uh, still in use today unofficially, they were adopted by the Army in 1973, but phased out uh, in the early 2000s with the adoption of newer Mali gear. So Greg Lowe invented the internal frame backpack in his garage in Colorado. His invention stemmed from his frustration with packs that were commercially available in the 1960s. These packs would position weight high above the shoulders, which is great for walking long distances over gently sloping terrain, but uh, difficult to use when scrambling over rock faces. Frameless options um, were too small for treks over any lengthy backcountry trip, and they couldn't carry as much as he might have needed. So Lowe's invention featured a flexible internal frame that contoured around the body, uh, bringing the wearer's center of gravity closer to hips, which has been the basic concept of the internal frame backpack since. So in 1989, an EMT make, named Michael Eidson wanted to carry water on his 100-mile bike ride in August near Wichita Falls, Texas, which is known locally as the Hotter Than Hell 100, understandably. Eidson took an IV bag from work, filled it with water, and then placed it inside of a sock, safety pin to his jersey. To get the water, he used the tube and clamped it shut with a clothespin. Uh, Having been asked a lot of questions about this, Eitzen realized he was onto something and went on to create the Thermoback, which, with the help of uh, Jeff Wemmer, turned into a Camelback, and through a few decades, these dromedary systems have come to dominate in the field of outdoor adventure. There's a great story here about uh, Mr. Wemmer biking around the country on a BMW bicycle in order to sell Thermobacks with only enough money to sleep in a bed three nights a week and uh, under the stars the rest.
1997, the military introduced the Molly Backpack, also known as Modular Lightweight Load Carrying Equipment. This type of backpack is still the standard supply for troops, uh, featuring durable nylon straps for maximum comfort and the ability to configure pockets and other attachments onto the base pack as desired or needed. The system's modularity is derived from the use of the Pouch Attachment Ladder System, or PALS, which is essentially rows of heavy-duty nylon stitched onto the pack. So the next generation of backpack technology might include the new Hoverglide concept, which is a suspended load technology, or SLT. The frame slides up and down as the wearer walks to reduce the accelerative forces that cause injuries and reduce mobility, according to the manufacturer's website. This action uh, reduces the user's metabolic energy requirement to carry the same load, reduces stress and strain, and even allows the user to carry a little bit more weight without noticing it. Uh, an even cooler feature of these uh, technologies is that the sliding motion can be captured in electricity, which allows for trickle charging of electronics and fewer, if any, batteries are needed in the uh, backcountry. So I want to leave you with a quote today that the part of backpacking lies in the journey and the desire to explore a world beyond our everyday lives, and in doing so, explore ourselves. So we want to thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw and learned something, like and subscribe. That way you can get notified when new W Trails videos are published. You can also follow us on Twitter, and if you're in the Indianapolis area, check www.wtrails.com for local workshops. Thanks.